uh, like so it will be by uh, Sharath Yashodharan. Uh, he's a PhD student uh, in uh, the EC department uh, at IASC. And uh, he will talk about large deviations of mean field interacting particle systems in a fast varying environment. Sharath. Sure. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, thanks to the organizers for this opportunity to speak at BPS. Uh, so I'll speak about large deviations of mean field models. Uh, this is joint work with my supervisor, Professor Rajesh Sundaresan. Okay. So the uh, background and motivation is to study uh, metastability in dynamical systems perturbed by small noise. Uh, to illustrate this phenomenon metastability, let's consider a SDE. Uh, so the SDE has a drift given by negative of U prime, where the function U is depicted here. So the function U has two uh, local minima at A and B, and then there is a saddle point at the origin. And there is a small parameter epsilon that is multiplying the noise. Now, if we start the SDE somewhere here, uh, then uh, since epsilon is very small, it will move in the, uh, most likely it will move in the negative uh, direction of U prime, which is in this direction. And it will come to a neighborhood of this point B. Uh, once it reaches a uh, neighborhood of B, then uh, U prime near B is close to zero. And therefore uh, the fluctuations are purely uh, because of noise. Uh, but again, epsilon is small uh, and therefore the process will stay here for a very long time. But then eventually it's going to cross this barrier and uh, go to the other uh, local minimum A. Uh, so here uh, we see that uh, the process exhibits a very different behavior over different time scales. That is, uh, suppose we fix a time scale and look at the process over that fixed time scale. Then if we start the process here, then we are most likely to find the process in a neighborhood of B. Whereas if it scale time in a suitable fashion with the, with the small noise parameter epsilon, uh, then we'll see uh, transitions from local minimum A, uh, local minima B to A and back and forth. So this kind of uh, phenomenon is called metastability. And our uh, motivation in this work is to compute uh, probabilities of these uh, rare dynamical transitions. Okay. Uh, so this is a more closely related example is this is of a wireless local, local area network. So in a wireless network, there are N uh, nodes accessing a common wireless medium and the nodes interact among the, themselves via a distributed algorithm called the MAC protocol. And the distributed algorithm essentially tells each node uh, when to transmit. And since the algorithm is distributed, multiple nodes can transmit at the same time. And therefore, uh, at a given time, if we look at the channel state, the channel state can either be idle or a collision or a successful transmission. Uh, idle when nobody transmits, a collision when multiple nodes transmit at the same time, and a successful transmission when a single node transmits. Now, uh, the protocol can be roughly described as follows. Each uh, state, each node has a state associated with it, and the state uh, represent aggressiveness with which a packet is transmitted. So if a node is in state zero, then it is the most aggressive state. Uh, if, if from state zero, if it finds a collision, then it will move to a less aggressive state, state one. And if it finds a collision again, it will move to state two and so on. And whenever it finds a successful packet transmission, it will move from the, its state to state zero. Okay. So in this example of a wireless network, uh, if we look at the macroscopic behavior of the system, so by macroscopic behavior, I mean the fraction of nodes in each state. So in this picture, uh, there are three, uh, three states for each node and there are 30 wireless nodes. And what you see here on the x-axis is the fraction of nodes in state zero. Y-axis is a fraction of nodes in state one and the remaining fraction is in state two, which is not shown in this figure. Uh, this example is constructed in such a way that uh, there are two uh, stable equilibria that are analogous to the local minimum in the SDE example. Uh, so one is near the origin and the other one is near this point, uh, point 0.5 comma point 0.5. Now in this uh, example, these equilibria or these points uh, correspond to different uh, operations of uh, regime. So that means uh, at this point near the origin, uh, every node tries to attempt packet transmission too frequently, uh, thereby uh, nobody getting access to the channel. Whereas at this point, uh, point 0.5 comma point 0.5, uh, nodes equally transmit and uh, everybody gets equal amount of uh, data transfer. So if in this example, uh, this is a sample path of this fraction of nodes. So if we start the process somewhere here, we see that the process uh, will remain in the neighborhood of this 
uh, equilibrium for a very long time, but then eventually it transits from uh, this equilibrium to the other. Okay, so the metastability uh, phenomenon occurs uh, here as well. And the, this process can also be viewed as a, a random perturbation of a ODE. Okay, so with that uh, motivation, I, I will introduce the system model. So the system is that of a mean field interacting particle system in a fast varying environment. So there are N particles and there is an environment. Uh, so the particles and the environment has a state associated with it that evolves over time in a Markovian fashion. So at time t, uh, the state of the little nth particle is denoted by x little n uh, superscript t. And this is a element of a finite set x. And at time t, the state of the environment is denoted by y n of t, which comes from a finite set y. Now, uh, as these particles and the environment evolve over time, uh, so there are certain allowed transitions. So the allowed transitions for the particles are described by a directed graph x comma ex. And that of the environment is described by a directed gra graph y comma ey. Now, uh, to define the transition rates, uh, we have to look at the empirical measure. So, the empirical measure at time t is defined as follows. So, we take a uh, Dirac uh, mass at the point x little n of t, uh, sum it over all particles little n and divide it by n. So, at the, each time t, this mu n of t is a probability vector and the ith component of that will tell us what fraction of particles are present in state i. Uh, this mu n of t uh, is an element of the set m1 n of x, that is the space of probability distributions on x, uh, where each component is some integer divided by n. And uh, this is a subset of m1 of x, which is a space of probability measures on x. Now, x being a finite set, uh, we view m1 of x as a probability simplex and we equip it it with the total variation metric. Okay, now uh, to define the transition rates, we are given certain functions. Uh, so to define particle transition, uh, we are given this fu these functions lambdas and to define the environment transition, we are given these functions gamma. So we are given a function lambda for each pair, pair of allowed transition of the particle in this edge set EX and for each uh, and state of the environment little y from the set y. And similarly, uh, for the environment transition, uh, we are given a function for each pair of um, the allowed transitions uh, for, from the uh, edge set ey. Now these functions are defined on the space of probability measures on x. And uh, at time t, the evolution is uh, described as follows. At time t, a particle makes an x to x prime transition at rate uh, lambda x x prime of mu n of t comma y n of t. So that means uh, the transition rates of a particle depends on uh, the states of the other particles through this empirical measure mu n of t. And in addition, it also depend, depends on the uh, environment, a state of the environment by n of t. Okay, and the environment makes uh, trans, a transition at time t, a y to y, y prime transition uh, at rate n times gamma y y prime. So this transition rate of the environment, again, depends on the particles through, the, through this empirical measure. And it occurs at a much faster rate that is multiplied by n. Okay, so this is the system model. So it's a system model of a fully coupled uh, finite state, uh, mean field interacting particle system in a fast environment. Okay, so more precisely, uh, we can look at this uh, tuple mu n comma y n. So, mu n is the empirical measure process of the particles and y n is the fast environment. So this tuple is a Markov process and we can write down its generator. Uh, so then generator has two terms, the first representing uh, transitions of the empirical measure process and the second, the fast environment. Uh, so if we look at the fast, so we fix uh, a psi and a y, then a fast environment can uh, jump to a state y prime and that uh, occurs at rate uh, n times gamma y y prime depending and that gamma depends on psi. Similarly, if we look at the em 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 empirical measure, the empirical measure can change if uh, any of the particle jumps. Now, suppose we consider a x x prime, then if a particle makes an x to x prime transition, then the, empiric the resultant empirical measure will be this where there is a reduction of one over n in state x and an increment of one over n in state x prime. And 
for each particle, uh, this x to x prime transition will occur at rate lambda x x prime. But then there are n times uh, psi of x many particles in state x. So the total rate is given by this. Okay, so this is our model. Uh, it's a fully coupled uh, mean field model. And we make the following assumptions uh, throughout the talk. So, uh, yes, sorry, sir, if I may yes. interrupt. So, can you tell me again what is the environment variable? What is it actually? Why? Ah, so in certain, so in the wireless LAN example, if uh, if we look at the channel state, uh, so if there are n nodes, then uh, if we scale the transmission probabilities of each node with n, then we'll find that the channel state will make uh, many more transitions than the particles. So the state of the channel, which is ideal collision or successful transmission, uh, these things change at order n, uh, whereas each particle will change order one. So the channel state will have three states here. Yes. Ideal yes, collision, yes, yes. That's, uh, that's the environment. What Correct, is. yes, yeah, yeah. Okay. And if we take the simplest one where there is no aggression and all that, let's say there is only zero state, everyone, is that possible? Or you maybe you take two states or something? Yeah, so we can. One? Uh, we can uh, also take yn to be a single state in which case it will be just uh, just the particles just the particle okay. oh, oh I, you mean this transition this, graph. Uh, this one uh. i'm trying to understand the simplest example so the okay. y part is idle collide or successful transmission three yes. states right yes. three yes. states yes and uh, x part what is the simplest uh, example i can keep yeah in? you can think of zero and one so zero is the most aggressive state of transmission and one is the least aggressive state. Okay, and x will be uh, the x will be the set zero comma one, and y will be the set uh, ideal collision and successful transmission. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, so that is uh, the model, and uh, we assume uh, we assume the we make the following assumptions. Uh, so first, we assume that the graphs uh, x and the, the graphs that describes the transitions of the particles and the transitions of the environment, both are irreducible, that, uh -huh. that is connected. Uh, then we make the following assumptions on the transition functions. So for each, uh, so we assume that the transition functions of the particles are uh, Lipschitz continuous on the space of probability measures. And also we assume that they are uh, uniformly lower bounded. Okay. And the transition functions of the environment, uh, we assume that the, they are continuous and again, they're uniformly lower bounded. Uh, Sharad, yes. I have a question. Yes. Uh, so in the example that you gave, this uh, channel state transitions would depend upon whether a particle has made a successful or unsuccessful transition, right? Yes, that's but correct. Your uh, model, system model here that seems to be the change in the channel state seems to be independent of what the particles do. Don't yeah, so the channel state, uh, the change will, uh, I mean, the yeah, the uh, transitions will depend, will not depend on each particles individually, but it will depend on the empirical measure. So the size, so we can write down the uh, transitions of the channel state, depending on the empirical measure rather than the states of each particle. Right. So there is this difference, there's a small difference, right, from the example. That uh, yeah, so in, in the example as well, uh, so uh, what matters is uh, how many uh, how many nodes are in each state. So the particular state of uh, a node does not matter. Yeah, but if a, if, a, uh, if a node tries to transmit and it is unsuccessful, mm -hmm. then the way your empirical measure changes, that is the first term in your generator and the second term in your generator would be kind of uh, be the same, right? And I mean, there would be some, uh, would it not be? Okay, anyway, go ahead. I'm, maybe I'm missing something. So, so I just thought the change in the channel state and what the individual particles do, are they kind of independent? That's what no, no, they're not independent. They depend only through this empirical measure. So, okay, let me see. No, but there could be simultaneous change in these depending uh, on what happens to individual particles. Right? Yeah, so we, we assume a continuous time model. So in the wireless LAN, uh, I explained it in discrete time, but uh, we can suitably assume a continuous time model. So multiple particles will not jump at the same time. So in that example, maybe this is related to, uh, actually, so the, in the example you said, 
This is not really a probability at all. Gamma y y dash is just a deterministic thing, right? Depending on the uh, states of the uh, individual particles, is that correct? Yeah. Th so this is the this is a transition, right? Uh, so after, uh, so it's a continuous time Markov ah. chain. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Go ahead. Uh Okay, so now uh, to describe the main result, uh, we have to, now since this process by n uh, makes order n many transitions, uh, it's convenient to look at the occupation measure of that fast environment. Uh, so from now on, we'll fix a time capital T and we view the empirical measure mu n as a, a random element of this uh, D space. So this D space is the space of all uh, trajectories, that is space of all uh, set of all functions on uh, zero comma T that are uh, measure value and these are uh, right continuous uh, with left limits and we can equip this d space uh, with a topology uh, called the scorohot german topology that makes it a complete and separable metric space now uh, the occupation measure of the uh, fast environment is defined as follows uh, so uh, for each uh, little t uh, we uh, look at the time spent by the process in each state so this is a measure and so that is uh, theta n is an uh, element of this trajectory d up arrow. So d up arrow again, again is it's a subset of d space. Now in this case, uh, the, uh, the d up arrow additionally has the difference that is theta t minus theta s for t larger than s is again a uh, again a measure on y, and theta t of the full full set is little t. Okay, so this uh, n. Uh, occupation measure this can also be uh, viewed uh, as a measure on this set uh, on, on zero t cross y and uh, this will have a density with respect to Lebesgue measure and we will often write uh, theta uh, dy dt as mt dy times dt so here mt is a probability distribution on y and our interest will be in this uh, tuple mu n comma theta n that is the empirical measure process for the particles and the uh, occupation measure process for the fast varying environment. Okay, so now uh, first let, let's look at what happens when n, n is large. So suppose that we freeze uh, the empirical measure at time t to be some state psi, then uh, the, the environment makes uh, order n many transitions. So we will anticipate that for large n uh, at time t, uh, the environment will quickly equilibrate to a certain distribution, which is associated with the, uh, which is the unique invariant measure of uh, its uh, Markov process. So that is, if we look at L psi, which is, which describes the evolution of uh, the fast environment for a fixed psi, uh, it, the fast way, the YN process uh, would equilibrate to pi psi, which is an invariant distribution of this. And, and similarly, since the particle states depend, the transitions of the particles uh, depend on the state of the uh, environment, we anticipate that the uh, an x to x prime transition will now occur with a rate lambda bar uh, that is averaged across this uh, distribution pi psi of the first first variable. Uh, so, so we so there is a law of large numbers uh, result for the um, for the empirical measure process mu n. So suppose that we uh, assume that the initial conditions converge to a deterministic point, then uh, the mu n, which is a, a random trajectory uh, that converges to the solution to a certain ODE. Now, this ODE has a driving function uh, multiplied by uh, this current state, and the driving function is the rate matrix associated with uh, the problem. That is, the x x prime entry of the driving function is going to be uh, the average rate of x to x prime transitions transition averaged over the empiric. Uh, over the invariant measure of the fast process. Okay, now uh, given this law of large numbers result, uh, similar to the SDE example, we can view this mu n as a small random perturbation of this ODE. And our, uh, our goal in this work it is to obtain a uh, steady fluctuations of uh, this tuple mu n comma theta. Okay, so to study uh, fluctuations, we will uh, use the theory of uh, large deviations. So, 
in the in large deviations uh, we are we have a metric space and we have a sequence of random variables that are uh, s valued and roughly speaking uh, uh, large deviations theory helps us uh, estimate probabilities of this form that is uh, probability that xn is in some set a uh, grows like e to the minus n times uh, some constant ia where this ia is defined as uh, infimization of a certain functional over a uh, so more precisely uh, we say that uh, sequence of x sequence of s valued random variables xn uh, satisfy the large deviation principle if there is a function i which we call the rate function this function i should have lower uh, should have compact uh, lower level sets so in particular uh, i is lower semi continuous uh, then we have a pair of inequalities for uh, open sets and closed sets so we so for every open set in the space uh, the probability that xn is in a uh, should be at least uh, e to the minus n times uh, this constant and similarly uh, for each closed set f uh, the probability that xn is in f is at most uh, e to the minus n times this constant. Okay, so if these three things hold, then we say that the sequence satisfies the large deviation principle with, a, with this rate function i. Uh, so this is uh, this now. Okay, now we come to this contraction principle. So here uh, we can get large deviations of one sequence from another. So suppose that S and T are metric spaces and f is a continuous function. Uh, if s xns are s valued random variables then we define the sequence yn as f of xn then uh, contraction principle says that uh, if xns satisfies the large deviation principle on this space s with rate function i uh, then yns satisfy the ldp uh, with rate function j where j of y is given by uh, the infimum over i of x for all those x that map to y and the proof of this can be uh, easily written down. So the lower level sets of compact sets, uh, or the compactness of lower level sets uh, follow from the compact compactness of lower level sets of the function i and the fact that f is continuous. And to get the upper and lower bounds, uh, we just observe that f, f inverse of a is uh, open if f is open and f inverse of a is closed if f is closed, so if a is closed. Okay, so with that introduction to uh, large deviations, so here is our main result. Uh, so suppose that the initial conditions uh, of the empirical measure satisfies a large deviation principle on the space of probability measures on X with a certain rate function I naught, then uh, the tuple uh, mu n comma theta n satisfies the LDP with this rate function. So I, the rate function I has two terms. So, so the first term is I zero, that is the a rate function for this initial condition plus there is a there is a rate function j that is evaluated on the trajectories uh, which i'll describe in the next slide so so pictorially this means that uh, for large uh, n there is a typical uh, trajectory for this mu n comma theta n and if we find a deviation from this uh, the probability uh, of that deviation is uh, roughly e to the minus n times uh, this rate function evaluated on that path Okay, so here is uh, the rate function j. Uh, so the rate function j is defined as follows. So there are two uh, parts. So in the first part, uh, which is the first two lines, uh, corresponds to the empirical measure process, and the second part corresponds to the fast, uh, uh, fast environment. So basically, what we do is uh, we take the we take the difference of the typical behavior, and then we cost it in a certain way. So if we look at the empirical measure process. Uh, this mu t dot minus lambda bar, uh, that is the difference of the typical behavior. So that is if, if mt is the uh, density of the occupation measure for the fast process at time t, then uh, mu t dot is uh, most likely to follow this, uh, uh, will most likely to be equal to this uh, lambda bar times mu. And if there is a deviation, then we take the difference. And similarly, uh, for the occupation measure part, uh, if MT uh, is the invariant measure for this generator L mu T, uh, then we see that this uh, first term here is zero. And if there is a deviation, then uh, yeah, the first term here is zero for all functions G. And if there is a deviation, then we cost it accordingly. Now, uh, this supremum, so here, uh, the, uh, the cost is defined uh, similar to uh, uh, legendre fengel dual. But in the uh, second term, uh, the function tau 
uh, is modulated according to the rates as well as the uh, empirical measure at time t. Okay, so here the function tau is uh, e to the u minus u minus one, which is um, the uh, the moment generating function uh, for a Poisson unit rate Poisson distribution uh, that is centered. Okay, and similarly uh, for the uh, fast component. Uh, uh, the, ra the rates gamma modulate the second term. Okay. Uh, so some uh, remarks about the rate function. So uh, the rate function is uh, positive uh, because if we set alpha and g to be zero, we get uh, j to be zero. And it, the, it holds, the equality holds if and only if the mu comma theta satisfies the mean field limit. And there are two parts uh, that I already uh, described. And the for the occupation me measure part, uh, the can, uh, large deviations for occupation measures of Markov processes uh, have been well studied, and the rate function is uh, given in the in the following form. That is, it, we take L mu t h divided by h uh, for all positive h, and uh, this form can be retrieved from our rate function by setting h equals e to the g. Okay. okay. So as an application of uh, the result, uh, we can get large deviations for the empirical measure process mu n. Uh, so that follows from contraction principle. So note that uh, the mapping that takes uh, the pair mu comma theta to mu is continuous. And therefore, uh, the sequence mu n also satisfies the LDP with the rate function uh, that is infimized over all theta. And, and this corollary uh, helps us uh, compute probabilities of these rare uh, dynamical transitions. So we can think of uh, the, sp the, sp uh, the space of probability me measures on X, and we, we can think of the um, vector field of the, of the limiting ODE, and uh, the transitions from one uh, equilibrium to the other can be, probabilities of those transitions uh, can be estimated using this uh, result. Uh, okay, so in the uh, rest of the time, I will uh, give some outline of the proofs. So usually uh, for uh, problems of large deviations of this uh, form, uh, many techniques uh, have been employed. So the first uh, set of techniques is on about discretization and change of measure uh, implemented by Friedin and Menzel, uh, Lipser and Beretonico uh, for diffusions and Dawson and Gartner and Leonard for mean field processes. Then uh, there is another set of approach uh, based on B convergence theory uh, that is uh, done by Bhutiraja and others for a two time scale system where the slow component is a diffusion process and the first fast component is a finite Markov chain. And there is another uh, approach based on convergence of certain nonlinear semigroups. And this was done by Kumar and Popovich and Kreitz. Uh, in this uh, problem, uh, we, we take the approach of uh, me the method of stochastic exponentials. So in this approach, uh, what we do is uh, we first show uh, exponential tightness. So exponential tightness means that the probability is outside a compact set uh, DK exponentially fast. And once we show exponential tightness, uh, analogous to the weak convergence theory, uh, it follows that there exists a subsequence along, with, along which the LDP holds. Uh, once we establish exponential tightness, uh, then we, we then uh, get a, a necessary condition for the subsequential rate function. And this necessary condition is written down in terms of an exponential martingale. Uh, the next step is to identify this uh, subsequential rate function on uh, nice elements of the space, and then extend it to the whole space using uh, suitable approximation arguments. And once we show that the subsequential rate function is uh, uniquely determined uh, irrespective of the subsequence that we started with, then it follows that the, the whole sequence satisfies the LDP. So a similar method uh, for the study of uh, large deviations for invariant measures was done by uh, Borker and Sundaresan, where in the second step, uh, instead of the, the necessary condition on the rate function is written down in the form of a, a dynamic programming equation. Okay, uh, so the first step uh, is to prove exponential tightness. Uh, so we, sh uh, so to prove, so th this is statement. So uh, we, uh, for any M, uh, for any uh, capital M, we can find a compact set KM. 
such that uh, the probability that the tuple is outside the compact set uh, decays like e to the minus n times m. Uh, to show exponential tightness, uh, what we do is we make use of suitable exponential martingales. So uh, for the occupation for the occupation measure of the fast environment, uh, we can show it easily. For the env for the empirical measure, uh, we can write down an exponential martingale. So here, uh, for a positive beta and a x vector alpha, uh, we take the inner product of alpha with the empirical measure, uh, then we get a exponential mat then we can write down exponential martingale which has this tau term here and the rate and the rates and the uh, empirical measure appear here and once we have an exponential martingale we can use uh, standard results on exponential tightness uh, for real value trajectories uh, and an application of groups inequality Okay, now the, the next step is to write down a necessary condition for the subsequential rate function. Uh, once we show the exponential tightness, uh, we know that there is a subsequence along with the large LDP holes. Uh, so let I tilde denote uh, the rate function for that LDP. Uh, to define, uh, to, to write down this necessary uh, condition on this uh, rate function I tilde, we have, we have to first define uh, certain quantities. Uh, so we define uh, functions alpha and G uh, depend dip on uh, 0 to t cross m1 of x. Uh, so these are uh, bounded measurable functions and continuous on the, spa the uh, space of probability measures on x. Uh, in terms of alpha and g, uh, we define this quantity u. Uh, this is similar to the rate function that I showed, except that uh, the alphas are now dependent on the uh, slow variable mu s. And similarly here, the function g is dependent on the slow variable. Uh, so in terms of uh, that u, uh, we, can uh, we can show that uh, for any alpha and g, the subsequential rate function i tilde must satisfy this equation, where the supremum is taken over all elements in the space, such that the empirical measure is absolutely continuous. Okay. Now, uh, to arrive at this, uh, what we do is we make use of, uh, we, we again uh, construct an exponential martingale in terms of u. So uh, so what we can do is for, we can first take a smaller class of functions alpha and g. So in the smaller class uh, for alpha, what I mean is uh, alpha is only dependent on uh, finitely many coordinates. And on that, uh, with that alpha, we can construct an exponential martingale in terms of the u that I defined in the previous slide. And since because it's a martingale, its expectation is one. And there is also some other terms b, uh, which are order one, which have not defined. And once I get, so we have on one hand, we have this, but on the other hand, since we know that the LDP holds along a subsequence, uh, we can apply Varadhan's lemma uh, to conclude that the uh, normalized log of this expectation uh, is equal to the left-hand side of what we want. So once we do this, uh, this equation one follows uh, for, a for certain alphas and Gs, and then we can extend it to uh, the full alphas and Gs that we started with. Uh, it can also be uh, shown that the supremum in uh, one is attained by some element. Okay, so now, so now that we have a uh, necessary condition for the rate function, uh, we try to write down a candidate rate function. That is, uh, we define I star as the supremum over alpha and G of this quantity U. Uh, so, so recall that our goal is to identify the subsequential rate function I tilde uniquely. And what we, uh, from now on, what we do is uh, to show that I tilde equals I star. Okay. Uh, so first of all, I star can be uh, shown to be equal to J. Uh, that is the rate function in the statement of the main result. And the difference is that here, uh, the supremum is over some functions and it's outside the integral. Uh, and the supremum over alpha and G can be pushed inside the integral over time. And uh, because of this, uh, uh, the, the condition on I tilde, uh, note that I tilde is always larger than I star. And uh, that, that is on gamma, uh, because the, since the supremum is zero, uh, the U is always less than I tilde. And by definition of I star, uh, I star is always larger than U. So we get I tilde is larger than I star on gamma. 
and outside gamma, we can show that I star is plus infinity. Okay. Now, uh, from now on, uh, the goal is to show that I tilde is less than or equal to I star uh, whenever I star is finite. So once this is done, then we would have shown that I tilde is equal to I star on the whole space, uh, which means that the subsequential LDP, the right function for the subsequential LDP is uniquely uh, determined uh, irrespective of the subsequence. Okay, so first uh, to, to identify this uh, right function I tilde, uh, we, we first look at certain uh, regular elements of the space. Uh, so suppose uh, we are given a mu hat and a theta hat such that uh, I star is finite and the following three condition hold. So the first condition is that the empirical measure is uniformly bounded away from zero. Uh, the second condition is that uh, in addition to the mapping uh, being absolutely continuous, we want this to be Lipschitz continuous. And we also assume that the density of the occupation measure of the fast environment is uniformly bounded by some, some number. So if, if these three conditions hold, uh, then we can uh, show that there exists an alpha hat and a g hat that's, that attains the supremum in the definition of the function i, t, I star. Okay. Uh, once that is established, we can take that particular alpha hat and g hat and plug it into the necessary condition for I tilde uh, to get this equality. And the existence of a supremum uh, in this uh, e equality gives tells us that there exists an element uh, mu tilde comma theta tilde uh, such that the u is equal to I tilde. But by definition of I star, uh, I star of uh, mu tilde comma theta tilde is larger than u. So we get uh, this here. Uh, now, since I, I star is less than I tilde by, uh, by definition, uh, we, the above uh, condition uh, gives us that I, I star equals I tilde on, on the set mu tilde, on this element mu, uh, mu tilde comma theta tilde. And then we then proceed to show that this element mu tilde comma theta tilde uh, on, that attains the supremum here is actually the same as the element mu hat comma theta hat that we started with. Okay. So once this is done, uh, then it follows that I tilde equals I star uh, on, the, on the element mu, mu hat comma theta, theta hat. Okay, now in showing these uh, things, the, mo mostly what we have used is uh, tools from uh, convex optimization and also uh, parametric continuity of optimization problems. So especially to show existence of alpha hat and G hat. Uh, so, so remember that alpha hat and G hat must be continuous in the space variable. Uh, to show that uh, we have used tools from uh, parameter continuity of optimization problems. Okay, so now, uh, uh, so that identifies uh, I tilde on regular elements of the space. Uh, if we take a general element of the space, uh, then this uh, supremizes alpha hat and g hat may not exist. So what we do is we produce a suitable uh, approximating sequence and use the previous uh, identification. Uh, so. That is, we produce a sequence uh, mu hat i comma theta hat i that are nice, and that that is that satisfy the conditions in the previous slide, and the mu hat and this sequence uh, converge to the element the element that we started with, and the, in addition uh, this on this sequence that is for our, all i uh, we have i tilde equals i star, and further uh, i star converges to the i star of the element that we started with. So if we show the three, if we, if we show, if we produce a, sub, a sequence mu hat i and theta hat i and show these things, then it follows that i, I tilde equals i star uh, on mu hat theta hat. Uh, so here is an example of an approximation. So suppose we want to uh, relax the approximation of uh, lower boundedness of the empirical measure process, the empirical measure. So that is, uh, suppose that the empirical measure for some component x starts at the origin. Uh, then, uh, then what we do is uh, we first, then uh, we construct this blue trajectory here. So that is, we take a time uh, one over i. Uh, we look at the point of uh, point on the uh, given trajectory at time one over i, and we somehow reach there uh, in the following manner. So what we do is at time zero, uh, at time zero, we let it run uh, you in using the limiting dynamics for a short amount of time. And once and and therefore during the 
that time uh, the supremizer alpha hat at that time is identically zero and once uh, and that will take us uh, to some point and from there uh, we will connect to this point uh, uh, at, at time one over i and once we connect there uh, we follow the red curve okay so even though uh, the newly constructed curve starts from zero uh, we can show existence of the mini of these optimizers alpha hat and g hat and then we can use uh, the previous procedure to identify the right function. Uh, so this is how uh, we relax the uh, lower boundedness of the empirical measure. Uh, similarly, uh, each the Lipschitz continuity and the lower boundedness of the uh, density of the occupation measure, those are also relaxed using uh, approximate, suitable approximations. And finally, uh, we, we get that uh, I tilde I equals I star uh, for all elements, uh, which will prove the LDP. Uh, so in summary, uh, we show we show the LDP uh, for the sequence mu n comma theta n, that is the joint law of the empirical measure process and the occupation measure of the fast environment. And some of the future directions include uh, study of uh, countable state space uh, for the particles as well as the environment, uh, because finiteness was very crucial in our approximation procedure. And another direction is to study diminishing rates. That is, we assumed that the rates are uniformly uh, bounded below by zero. And extending that to uh, rates that can hit zero will be an interesting case. So I will stop here. Thank you. OK. Uh, thank you, Shagat. Uh, any questions, comments? If anyone has, please unmute and ask. I had one question on the yeah. on the basic model. Uh, can you go back to the basic model? Uh, so it's like what Srikanth is asking also. So is it possible that uh, that uh, now your rates lambda depend on the empirical measure like a making glass of type interaction, right? There's mu and t in terms of the, the x particles. So uh, is this amenable to other interactions between the in the particles or only depend on, on this whole analysis will only work with the empirical measure uh yes we, so it it should i mean the rates uh, should not depend on the um the uh, the states of individual particles but it should it should, on, it should only de depend on the empirical measure yes now where does the technique break down if that's the if that's sort of uh, uh, I so if, spot if, it. Uh, 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 so if that happens, I mean, the limiting equation will itself be not clear. Correct. That's, that's yeah. correct. That's one, one stumbling block. Okay. So, yes. Okay. Yeah. But if the limiting equation exists, then it's, it's, it's possible, you think? Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, okay. So the definition of the rate function, et cetera, are all uh, in terms of the empirical measure. Correct. Uh, yeah. So I, I'm I not... Okay. 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 Anyway, I, uh, thanks. Okay. Okay, any other questions? Okay, if not, uh, maybe people can unmute uh, themselves.